All right. Okay, so tonight, um, I don't know if you guys saw, and you might wanna do a quick scroll through if you can. Uh, Taylor is hosting our call this evening, but she actually suggested to us in, in um, earlier this week, she had mentioned that she was going to reference a book that she is reading. Her personal development right now is called The Confidence Gap. It's a book by Russ Harris. Uh, and it is more so about not what motivates you, but how to almost channel your inner confidence. And as I'm reading through it and as I'm working through it, it's not about eliminating fear. You know, you're afraid to invite, you're afraid to talk about the opportunity, you're afraid of what people might think of you, but it's really about embracing the fear and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And one of the things that she gave to us in the team page was a, a booklet that you can work through. It was, uh, I think it's about five pages, and there's just a bunch of questions. It's an inventory for you to really work through and think about, okay, what are some of my insecurities? What are some of my bigger issues? Um, and what if I embraced some of those insecurities? And what if I really started focusing on them so that I could kind of be aware of them and make some changes as needed? So she's gonna be on the call tonight. Um, I know she's running a little bit late. She does teach dance tonight. So she is going to pop on as soon as she is. Um, we're going to hand it over to her. But guys, let's talk about a couple of things. And if somebody is uh, is able to, can you just tell people in the KB that the, the call is live? Can you guys, um, can somebody post that for me? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So the leadership retreat is coming up in April. It's April 22nd. Now this is open to all KB coaches. Let me explain what the requirements are at this point so that you know. Guys, this is an unbelievable opportunity. If you are serious about this business, you should absolutely make this a goal to attend this event. So here is what... I need from you. If you are interested in this event, it is in Deep Creek, Maryland. And when, did I freeze? Can you guys hear me? Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Okay, that was weird. I'm not really sure. Thank you. Okay, so there is a $25 deposit. It's non-refundable. Whenever you sign up, you just PayPal it over to kdersta at gmail. What are the requirements? SC10 in March. If you did not hit it or you are a new coach, if you did not hit it in February. If you have hit it in February, you need SC5 in February, SC5 in March minimum to be able to go. And then on top of that, there are two more requirements that need to be met. One is that your monthly PV needs to be at least 500 or above. If you're achieving success club, this shouldn't be an issue. Your, your points should be above or around 500 if you're doing that at the minimum and don't have any um, returning customers. So I that is beyond doable. The team builder rung, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute, is another accomplishment that needs to be done by April 5th, which means for March, you need to be on the team builder rung. And then finally, diamond rank by March 31st. In order to attend, you must achieve two of the three of those. So the first 25 spots are what are gonna fill, and I am presenting it like this. My personally sponsored who hit the requirements, I pay in full um, and personally will be in re re reimbursing them that $25 deposit. Um, Kim Carver from Corporate as well as Melanie Mitro, who is the top coach in the organization. Both of them are joining us on Saturday for a large portion of the training. We're gonna be doing large team building events. I know that a couple of the Diamond coaches and I are going to be talking about what it's gonna look like. We're kind of designing the feel of it, um, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be a great opportunity for you to move your business forward, to really focus on some of your goals and to get individualized attention from two amazing resources. So I'm going to be honest with you. This is not normal. Like this is not something that is available to most coaches. And the fact that this is available to you is absolutely something that 
you would want to jump on. So we're going to go from April 22nd through the 24th. Mark your calendar, put some skin in the game, and get yourself there for sure. Uh, let me check the comments because I see some people talking. Um, I know. Well, that's okay, Rachel. Yes. And can't wait to fly to Pittsburgh. Katie, where's your pretty face? Uh, you don't want to see my pretty face tonight. It's bad. Okay. Uh, next one. Guys, oh my gosh. I just like am blown away by Success Club this month. This is so big. What is it? The seventh of the month. So we are one week into March. And I have to tell you, these numbers are simply amazing because this is you making a choice to help other people. You know, it's a choice to tell people about the amazing products, the amazing programs that we have, and making a commitment not just to sell a product, to, but to help people on their journey. And so I look at these numbers and I go, oh my gosh, like what in the world are we doing this month? Is it the passion? Is it the products? What is it? But can you imagine, like just for one second, if you maintain that momentum that you're seeing this month, month after month after month. So I especially have to shout out the coaches who have already achieved success club. Michael Lean is at SC 20, seven days into the month. Rachel Harvey, 14. And if you haven't noticed in the KB, if you see people saying, uh, get some, they are referencing the fact that they have signed a coach, either a discount coach, a business building coach, and they're getting a diamond dance. And so I know that I've seen Rachel on there quite a bit this month. She is really helping other people get started with their businesses as well. Danielle Engel, Ashley Harris, Brittany Bobanovich. I got to tell you, Brittany has made an ultimate comeback. She's been a coach for two years, and she is, is just excited to be back in the coaching game, and she is ready to to make some huge impacts on people. Uh, Cynthia Los. Um, I think it's it's Ro, Rojo, I believe, but Renisha Burns, Taylor, Jen Scholler, all have achieved it. But guys, look at the amazing list of people who are well on the way to achieving Success Club. You guys are doing amazing, and I am so flipping proud of you. I am just, this is just amazing to me to see that. So congratulations to you. Lots of new names on this list. Lots of people who are signing their first coaches. Lots of people who are making a huge impact. So shout out to you. Okay, and then I also have to take a minute to shout out what we call the leadership ladder. So if you're a new coach, this might look a little bit new to you. It might seem a little bit foreign to you. So I'm really quick just going to work through what this means so that you can put it into your, into your mind as something you want to, to really strive for. Um, I remember when I was first introduced to this, I had heard that really hitting that team leader rung was something to strive for because that's when you start to see momentum and a shift in your business. Now what you see on the left hand side here is really what it breaks down to. So to be considered a business starter, you have to, um, you have to make at least $100 in commission a month and you have to achieve SC5. And so, and, and you have to be at least a coach rank. However, your team builders when, is when you start to actually see the growth in your business because you're actually starting to build a team of coaches. And so you have to achieve all of the, um, all of the qualifications in this rung to achieve that rank. The ranks come out on the 5th of every month and they are for the month before. So they came out on the 5th of March and they indicated what coaches did in February. So a team builder would make about 200, they have to make a minimum of $250 in commission. They have to achieve Success Club 5. They have to be an emerald or a ruby. They have to achieve... Um, the two personally sponsored coaches have success club points. They don't have to achieve success club, but they have to have points. And then they have to have at least 200 volume points on their week 
leg of that month. So you take that and then you move towards team leader and you have to be at least diamond. You have to have four coaches who have success club points on the board. You have to have at least 5,000 volume points on your weak leg. So you can see how this really is a great indicator of not just rank, but it's showing you how rank is going to be connected to your commission. So you have to also notice that one of the biggest qualifications in here is success club. You can't be one of these rungs without you yourself achieving success club and you guys this is why i put such an emphasis because success club is always what's going to move your business forward every month month after month achieving that means you are committed to growing you are doing what you are asking your coaches to do as well so if you kind of think about this go okay you know uh, or maybe i was a business starter last month in February, but I know that I can become a team builder. So what do I need to do? All right, I need to move up to an Emerald coach. And that means that I have to commit to having two coaches achieving success club points. That doesn't mean they're hitting success club, but they too are committed to achieving success club points. That means that they are working towards helping other people as well. Look at these rungs and really think, where am I now and how can I get to the next level? How can I achieve the next level? So if you're a business starter, make a, make a deal with yourself and say, okay, I am going to focus on every piece of the rung to achieve team builder. And then if you're team builder, ask yourself, what do I need to do to get to the team leader rung? Who are my, who are my key players in the game and how can I help them? Now you guys know I can spend a lot of time on this topic. I don't mind doing in total separate call on this as well if that is something you guys would think is beneficial. But I really just wanted to make sure I was – letting you guys know these these are names that are really truly um, doing an amazing job moving their business forward and uh, this is just awesome so i am very very proud of all of the names that we're seeing on the board and was there anything i needed to do in the chat um yeah i know it's very cool it is so cool to say yep all right next slide okay a couple of announcements all right so if you are a new coach, you might not be familiar with what this is, but um, in the summer we had a campaign called Every Sweat Matters and we were using the hashtag Every Sweat Matters. And what we were doing essentially was sweating for other people and usually it was people who couldn't sweat or we were sweating for people who were grieving. And so as many of you guys know, I was diagnosed with cancer almost two years ago and it got to the point where I was struggling to read a lot of what we were sweating for. It was just very emotional for me. So I kind of got together with a couple of the leaders who were, who were very passionate about the Every Sweat Matters. And we are going to be returning that. We are going to be going back to that, but it's going to look different. It's going to be a separate group. Um, and we are going to sweat for various things and I am going to have more information on that But I just want you to know I appreciate your feedback about it because I know that some of you this meant a lot to you and uh, It is gonna come back. It's just gonna look a little bit different this time around So more information is coming your way on that. Just be on the lookout in the team page Like page training. This is something I'm getting a lot a lot a lot of feedback about like pages, your business pages, personal pages versus like pages, Instagram versus like pages. Uh, where do I go? How do I start? What's this boost? You know, how do I run an ad? What is, what is all of this? I am going to simplify it as much as possible. Um, I am going to do a like page training starting the month of April 4th. Now, here's the deal. This is going to be a commitment. It is a training. It's almost like, you know, when you, you start a course in college and there's so much information and you have like the syllabus and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. 
guys, like pages take time and they do take some dedication and they take trial and error. So uh, my job on April 4th is to teach you what I'm learning right now about it and how I am um, at, right now I'm at Success Club 30 and that is because of my like page, because of what I've done in the last month when I'm laser focused on my like page. So I am gonna pay that forward. But I need to know you have some skin in the game. If I'm gonna take time to work with you, I need to know that you have skin in the game for this. And that means that I need to know that you're at Success Club 5 in March and you are in Emerald or above. And also, one thing I didn't write on here, but it is required that you have a minimum of 100 likes. If you're looking to get likes, put your like page into the team page, ask for likes. Invite everyone on your friend list. Invite everyone on your spouse's list. Get yourself to 100 very easily. Get yourself to Success Club. Get yourself to Emerald if you not are not there because this is a training that you don't want to miss. It could be a, a, huge, um, a huge game changer in your business. So I, I want you to know that that is there, but I am, I am very committed to working with people who have some skin in the game. So those are the requirements for that. All right, and I gotta thank Michaeline uh, Sirkwa for this one. So we're gonna do a national wake up call challenge every Friday. So the national wake up call is every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. If you cannot listen live to these calls, you have to make sure you are committed to looking at the playback. If you're on a commute to work, put it on, you know, you put it on. Um, on your iPad or on your iPhone and just listen to the playback. I don't care where you are, but make this a non-negotiable. Every week, sometime between Monday and Friday morning, make a commitment to listen to that playback. Make a commitment to listen to the national wake-up call. The speakers on these calls are, are good at what they do and they are solid in the advice that they give and the way that they speak. So how do you catch a call? Well, you can simply dial in at the playback number, which I have here, write it down, or you download the podcast Team Beachbody. They are all on there. But what's gonna happen is Friday, I am going to have a series of three questions about the national wake-up call. And your job is to answer those questions in a private message for a chance to win a prize. So make sure that you have listened to that national wake-up call. You are ready to rock results. You are ready to answer those questions on Friday morning when I ask them. Uh, Jolie um, Voris was on the call this week, and she gave a great analogy um, to basketball. It's March, so March Madness is going on, and she did a great comparison with uh, our businesses. So please make sure you listen to that call. It was awesome. All right. So with that being said, I hope that Taylor is on the call. I'm going to stop my share. I'm here. Taylor, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. All right. All right. Hi, guys. Turn. Are you ready for me? Go for it. Okay. All right. Sorry. I just flew in my house from teaching, but I really wanted to be able to share this with you guys. Um, what's really cool is actually, I mean, this isn't cool necessarily, but in February I was struggling with success club. Um, I was having, I, I think I sat there at SC one for, way longer than I normally do. And I was really stressing out, really getting in my own head about it. And so I just posted in a group, does anyone have any good personal development that can help me get out of my head? I feel really in my head right now. I know something's going on. And Kirsten actually posted that she saw some people post in another group about this book called The Confidence Gap. So right there in the moment, I was like, whatever, what the heck, I'll try it. Personal development always helps me get out of my funk. So I'm going to download this on audio and I'm going to go for it. So within the first 10 minutes of listening to this book, I literally was like, oh my gosh. I, and I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that with personal development, but it really, really, if you're struggling with anything, whether it's business or fitness or personal related, dig in your personal development and I promise you, you'll have some aha moments. But it really struck a chord for me and I was like, I have to share this with other people. And I think within three or four days of starting to read this book, I went from SC1 to SC9. So it totally flipped my perspective around and just helped to validate the things I was feeling and maybe it didn't make me think I was crazy for thinking those things and that it's natural. 
So what the confidence gap is about is basically um, how we listen to all these, how we read all these self-help help books and we listen to all these things about confidence. And we're taught from the time we're little that in order to be confident, we have to like not show emotion or never be negative and always think positively. But in reality, that's not how the human mind is wired. So we really need to find that gap between what is realistic and what we need to do to push ourselves forward. So I have some notes here. So if my eyes look like I'm like reading. It's because I am. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is I posted in the team page. I don't know if you guys were able to pull it up but I posted that little document that Katie mentioned at the beginning of the call. And what I really am gonna focus on today is the first part of that. The second part of the book goes all into the, um, your values that you keep at the forefront of your mind whenever you're reaching for your goal so that you always feel good about what you're doing. But we, that's like a whole other topic for a whole other call. I just wanna kind of focus on the confidence factor today. So the first part of the little worksheet that I gave you is in a world where you had unlimited confidence, how would you behave differently? So if you want to kind of like think about these answers or write them down if you have this in front of you. How would you behave differently? How would you walk and talk differently? How would you play, work, and perform differently? How would you treat others differently? Your friends, relatives, partner, parents, children, and work colleagues. How would you treat yourself differently? How would you treat your body? How would you talk to yourself? How would your character change? What sort of things would you start doing? What would you stop doing? What goals would you set and work towards? What difference would your newfound confidence make in your closest relationships and how would you behave differently around those people? What difference would your newfound confidence help you to make in the world? And then he goes through this life change list and he actually says in the book that a lot of people's minds will tell them, oh, I'll do this list later just kind of like saying it's not really that important or this isn't important. And he like actually calls you out on it when you're reading the book or listening to a book. He's like, no, stop what you're doing and do this now. So this was really, this is the first thing I did when I was reading the book. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this alone really helped me work through whatever was holding me back. Um, as I develop genuine confidence, here are some ways I will act differently. So if it's as far as your business goes, you could say, I'm always going to do my three vital behaviors always going to send out those invites. I'm always going to post those scary posts. I'm going to always work out because it's important. Here are some ways I will treat others differently. Here are some ways I will treat myself differently. Here are some personal qualities and character strengths I will develop and demonstrate to others. Here are some ways I will behave differently in close relationships with friends and family. Here are some ways it goes on, so on and so forth. Here are some important things I will stand for. I love that question. Um, here are some goals I will work towards. Here are some actions I will take to improve my life. So go through this. I really encourage you to sit down and answer these. Some of them took me a lot longer to answer than I thought. Like here are some activities I will start to do more of. Um, I really had to think about that. I was like, what, what will being confident or learning how to be confident help me do more of? So it was really great just to sit down and think about all of that. All right. So the one thing that really changed everything for me was when he talked about the truth about confidence. And this is what he says. People think that they can't do something until they feel more confident, but in reality, confidence is action first and a feeling later. So how true is that? How many times do we think, you know, once I get better at this and I feel more confident, then I'll be able to thrive or do or feel more accomplished or feel more successful. But the reality of it is, is that we have to do those scary actions first, and then we will feel confident later. And just putting that into perspective that you have to do the actions first to be able to feel the confidence later was a game changer for me. Um, why is it so hard to remain confident? And this is because, and this is proven fact by psychologists, is that the human mind isn't naturally confident. It actually is naturally wired to think negative things about yourself and compares yourself to others. And it actually goes back to fight or flight. Um, whenever we do something that's outside of our comfort zone or that's a little bit scary, our natural response is to fight or flight. So your mind's going to start to go in the negative directions so that you won't do it. And it's going to fight you on it because it doesn't actually want you to do it because it 
doesn't feel comfortable. So your brain is just naturally wired to, to go to those negative places. So making sure that you can actually pinpoint that and understand that that is normal. So when you're having days where you're self-doubting yourself or you're having days where you're like, I'm not good at this. I'm a terrible coach. I'm a terrible leader. When you're having those days, it's, it was so great and such a breath of fresh air to be like, this is totally normal and everyone else is feeling this way at some point in time, probably more often than they let on as well. Um, lacking confidence comes from a place of fear, but he lists out some myths about fear. So if you want to write these down, I um, put these in my phone and I have been referring back to them whenever I start to get like a little bit shaky. If I don't want to do my invites, if I don't want to do my posts, I sit down and I look at these and it really helps me to just push through those feelings. Um, number one is that fear is a sign of weakness. That is the myth. Fear is actually normal. So he actually gives the analogy, which I thought of, um, that I have been thinking of a lot lately is whenever you're little and you're sad or you're upset or you're scared of something, um, your natural instinct is to cry. And immediately we're often told to be a big girl or big boy and stop crying. So we associate those bad emotions with not being strong. And so then we become scared of showing those emotions or allowing them to be normal or normalizing them for ourselves. So fear is normal and it is not a sign of weakness. Everyone is afraid of something. The second myth is that fear inhibits success. This is false. And he says, whenever you can harness fear, you can actually use it for your benefit. So whenever you can label it as a fear, you can actually just put it in its box and say, this is just a fear. And you can take the action steps to move forward to then feel more confident. The third myth he talks about is um, that fear holds you back, and he says that it's not actually the fear that holds you back. It's not the fear itself. It's your attitude towards the fear. So just because you're afraid of doing something doesn't mean that you can't do it, but if you let that attitude towards the fear dictate your actions, that's actually what holds you back, not the fear itself. And then the fourth myth is that confident people do not have any fear. And that is not true because he says that confidence is a transformed relationship with fear. And I think he actually talked about Lance Armstrong and saying how he won all those Tour de France's and um, was he ever afraid? And he says, I was afraid every single day whenever I woke up and I had to go race. I always was afraid, but I had to do it anyway because you just, that's the actions are what makes you more confident. And then moving forward a little bit, we will talk about this. Um, where does fear actually come from? And he gives the acronym EMITS, and EMIT stands for emotions, memories, images, thoughts, and sensations. And then he goes even deeper to say, what are thoughts? And your thoughts are the words and pictures inside your head. And then he points out that those thoughts, typically, whatever you're thinking, are not real. So whenever you're afraid of something, you usually have some sort of emotion towards that thing, maybe a memory of something in the past, and then you start to think up all these images of how it's going to go wrong, all these thoughts of what's going to happen to you if it goes wrong, and then you can actually start to feel it. The sensations and the anxiety comes out in you, but you have to make sure that you remember that those fears inside your head, and they're just words and pictures, and they're not real. And when we acknowledge that negative thoughts will never stop or go away, that is when action happens. So this example really was cool. Um, he gives the example when you learn a new language. When you learn a new language, your old language doesn't actually leave your brain. You just create new space for the new language. And this is the same as acknowledging your negative thoughts. So whenever you have these negative thoughts, it's not important to get rid of them. It's important to acknowledge them. They have a place. They, have, they live inside your brain. They live within all of us, and they're going to stay there. But it's important to learn how to acknowledge them and then continue to act despite them. So you're probably thinking like, okay, Taylor, this is all great. Great to say, whatever. Great book. But how can you actually stop letting these negative thoughts derail your actions? So this, these exercises, you are, you're going to feel so silly. I was doing them in my car by myself, and I was like, this is ridiculous. But that's the whole point of it is to take these negative, fearful thoughts and just 
um, train your brain to, to realize like how ridiculous they actually are. So what I want you to do now is earlier in the team page, I asked you to write down your biggest, your biggest thing that makes you not feel confident or your biggest fear as far as your business goes. For, so for me, I'm just going to use mine as an example throughout the call. My biggest fear is that I'm going to be misunderstood. So whenever I sit down and I go to send my invites or if I sit down and I go to put those scary posts out there, um, I always have this thought in my head that people are going to think I just am trying to make money off of them or people are going to think I'm not actually trying to help them when I really am or people are going to think I don't love teaching dance and I just like I'm trying to find a quick fix or something like that like all these misunderstandings that other people might have about what I'm saying or doing start to play in my head and that really holds me back and when I can tell you this that whenever I'm struggling business wise it's usually because I'm letting these fears totally overwhelm and take over my brain space and not labeling them and putting them where they belong. So these are the exercises that I have learned from this book so far. And it's so funny because um, I started re I started listening to this, I guess the middle of, of February. So almost going on a month and it's, it's been such a huge change. I can't even, it, this is going to sound so silly, but just bear with me and just have some fun here. Okay, so he says, it is important to not fight with these thoughts of negativity, but rather teach ourselves how to diffuse from them. So unhook yourselves from them. They will appear again, and they may appear very often. So training yourself to diffuse will allow yourself to move on quicker. So write down the biggest negative thought that holds you back. And writing it down is important because it's really, it's really great to be able to see it and see it as words on a piece of paper as opposed to... To a thought in your head so it becomes a tangible thing that you're that you're looking at the first thing that we do so I would have on my piece of paper I should have written it down for you but I ran in the door like a crazy person is I'm going to be misunderstood and number one the first way is in order to separate that negative thought from your mind and actually feeling like a real thing there are a couple things you can do to make them seem silly because they are the first thing he says to do is to sing your negative thoughts or to say them in a silly voice so you're all muted right now except for me so go ahead and take that negative thought I can see your mouth so they better move and say it in a silly voice or sing it out loud to yourself and it's gonna seem like ridiculous ready set go no one's mouths are moving. <laughs> no one. Not one single person. Okay, so do that later. I would sing for you, but um, I'll, I'll spare you. I'll spare you. I'll just keep doing my diamond dances. But it's awesome because whenever this fear of being misunderstood, when I sit down to go, <laughs> no, Katie, whenever I sit down to do this, to do, you know, the things that I don't want to do um, because of some fear, I can just like say it. Like the other day I was like saying it, walking all around my house. The only person that's here with me ever is my dog. And I was, I kept saying it in a British accent because it just made it silly. And you know, like I was like laughing at myself and then I sat down and I banged out those invites and I was done. The second thing you can do is anytime you find yourself saying those negative things to yourself, because how often do you hear yourself saying like, oh my gosh, I say a lot of things out loud because I am by myself a lot. Um, but anytime you hear yourself saying those negative things, acknowledge yourself saying it or your mind saying it. And he says just to say, thanks mind, like sarcastically, just to acknowledge that your brain went there and that you're not going to let it live there for too long. So acknowledge the negative thought by thanking it in a sarcastic way and move forward. The next thing you could do is if you find yourself dealing with negative thoughts that you can't shake, recognize that it's just that by saying, I just got hooked. So if you're sitting there and you can't, you're not getting past it or you, you find after a couple days, maybe you don't realize right off the bat at the beginning that this is what's happening. But when you start to realize there's this thought that's actually holding me back, this thought of fear, if you can actually label yourself as have you got hooked by this negative thought it will kind of seem silly and funny and you can move forward from it and be like okay how do I work past this negative thought now all right and so this last thing that I want you to do um I actually I was doing this I think I was sitting right here at this desk actually okay so I want everyone to do this right now no one has to make any noise you're just going to do something with your hands so take your hands like this and just put them on your lap in front of you or on the table in front of you, wherever you are. 
Okay, so slowly, you're just gonna take your hands, just keep moving them up slowly. Keep moving them slowly towards your face. And pretend like your hands are your negative thoughts. Keep moving them towards your face. Okay, now cover your eyes with them. Just sit there with them covered. So with your negative thoughts here, covering your face, you can't really see very much of the world around you, right? Okay, so take your hands, which are your, is your negative thought, and move them away from your face. And put them down. And now you can see, because your negative thoughts aren't in the way. So it's so silly, but if you're having these silly thoughts, just take your hands, turn them into the thought. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my husband is asking me questions. Move them up to your face cover your face, and then move them away. Just turn your thoughts into something tangible that's blocking you from seeing the world around you or being able to move forward. It's ridiculous, but it, it's, <laughs> it works. I don't know. I've done it probably like five times in the past couple of weeks, and it just makes me laugh and then, you know, move forward from it. Um, the last thing that he talks about is really that in order for this to work, you have to continue to practice it. You have to participate in something he calls the confidence cycle. And what he says is with the confidence cycle, um, you do this over and over and over again, but you have to practice it. So you practice singing your negative thought in a silly voice or practice, um, you know, moving your hands up and down or practice saying I got hooked or practice saying thanks mind then you have to apply it. So make sure once you do that thing that's gonna move you away from that thought, you apply it and you actually take the action. You're then going to assess it. So for instance, if the hands thing doesn't work for you, be like, okay, that's like not working this time. So maybe I need to try the singing in a silly way. And then modify. So if you need to switch it up, keep rotating through the different ways to get yourself unhooked from these negative thoughts and to just keep pushing forward. But make the thing that is most important and what I loved about this book was right away, I felt so relieved knowing that these negative thoughts and these um, things that held me back are so natural and something that everyone deals with because I think a lot of times in this business where everyone is so public about what they're doing and their successes and not so much about their failures, it's super easy to be like, um, you know, I'm not as good of a coach as her or she's way better than me. She's, you know, this rank and I'm this rank or she's this whatever and I'm at this or she has this many points and I have this. And just acknowledging that that's totally a natural human way to think but what you do to push yourself forward is, is, is what's going to set you outside of all the rest. So taking those negative thoughts and those fears, just letting them be that what they are and acknowledging them and continuing to take action is what's going to build your confidence over time. You're never going to be someone that if you are someone that never has a negative thought, he actually says in the book, there's something like clinically wrong with you. If you never think negatively about yourself, there's something wrong with you. So it's totally normal. That's all I got. Do you guys have any questions? Or are you like, this chick's crazy? <laughs> all right. I'll see if they have questions for you. I, I actually, so I do have a couple of questions. So number one, the worksheet that you provided. So if you aren't sure where that is, guys, I believe it should be in the files section. And if it's not in the files section, you just scroll down. I think, was it a Word document or a PDF? Do you know? It was a PDF, but then I just posted here. I'll just put the link actually right in the chat section. There, there was a link for it on his website, so I just posted the link. So how long did it take you to work through the worksheet? Um, I did it, so... The thing about reading the book is you only do the worksheet in chunks. So the first thing you do is read those questions. Like he says, read these questions below and it's just those lists. And then in like the next chapter, you fill out the life changing, um, the life changing list. Like he, he, he says like, you cannot go on in this book until you fill out this life changing list. Cause I'm going to, um, acknowledge it later on. And then later in the book, it starts talking about values. So you go to the value section of that worksheet and you start working through that portion of it. So the life-changing list, honestly, I when I got to that chapter of the book and he said to start working through it, it took me 
like the rest of that day to really sit down and be like, cause I really had never thought about, mm-hmm. um, how I was going to treat other people differently. If I was more confident, if you're more confident, what I found is when I'm more confident, um, I just have found that I'm more confident in what I'm saying to people. And then therefore my conversations with other people have just been more positive and encouraging regardless of what we're talking about. I mean, even with my husband, like, um, what I've noticed actually, this is a perfect example is a couple of days ago, we've had a, like a little bit of stress in the house. And my first instinct when I'm stressed is to like snap and I snapped at him. And then I realized like, Oh, that was just a negative thing that entered my head. And so I was immediately able to rectify it and like laugh about it. It became a joke. So it kind of has been able, it's, it's just changed a lot of the ways in how I just kind of go about thinking about conversations in general. Um, but like some things on there, like here are some ways I will behave differently in relationships and involving work, education, sport, or leisure are just, um, I, that took me a long time to answer. Cause I was like, sports and leisure. What is that? I don't have any of that, but I really, I really had to think about those things. I do think too, that one thing that worked for me in, in just the business in general is when you're confident about what you have, like the programs and the products, you just start to understand and you start to be able to talk about them in a different way. So you need to say to yourself, you know, am I knowledgeable about what we have as a company and the opportunity that I am giving, I am gifting really to other people whether physically, financially, or even emotionally, you have that right in front of you. And if you aren't, and I I do, I had to train my mind to say, if I'm not sharing this, I'm being selfish. And so when I just kind of like made myself think in that way, it became easier for me to talk about. It became easier for me to share it because I just looked at it like, If I'm not doing this, if I'm not doing my job, then I'm sort of being selfish. I'm robbing someone of the opportunity to potentially change their life. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think too about uh, Kim Carver, uh, who is going to be at that retreat, but he talks, uh, he's also my mentor and he talks a lot about this concept of controlling the controllable, right? So when people say no to you and you get those no's, that's sort of out of your control. But what is in your control is that opportunity to invite someone. And where does that come from? Well, that comes with confidence. That comes with feeling comfortable about what you have to offer. That comes with being comfortable with the idea that somebody might say no to you. You know, it comes with all of that, being confident in yourself as a coach and as a leader and as somebody who is gifting this to other people as well. Mm-hmm. So I just, uh, I was going to ask you one more thing, but now I forget. Do you guys have questions for Taylor? I think too, like, I'm just going to point this out on the, on the topic of Kim Carver, because he is the coach whisperer. But when I have talked to him too, I think the other part that can be tricky is actually even figuring out what to call the fear, the thing that you're afraid of doing. Um, I never knew or really could really knew that I was afraid of being misunderstood. It was by telling, sitting there with Kim and saying like, this is, this is what I struggle with that he was able to say like, Oh, okay. You're afraid people are going to misunderstand you. Like I would say like, I feel icky or I feel pushy or whatever. And he would just say, he just said, okay, so you think people are going to misunderstand you. So really being able to sit down and figure out, that's why I wanted you to write down what your biggest fear is, um, that, that causes you to not be able to be confident in the business. Cause once you have that written down on a piece of paper, it just becomes a thing. It's not real anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So do you guys have questions for Taylor about it in general? Hey Taylor, did you think like your invites were phrased differently once you like read through this book and you started applying these things? Did you, the way you spoke to people, was it in a different way or did you just, you know, forget the fear and just Um, do the invites? I actually, um, It also really brought out a lot of other fears in me whenever I was going through this. So 
a lot of my fear was that people are doing their things that my vital behaviors, for example, people were doing them differently than me. And I felt like they were doing them better or faster and I wasn't going to be able to keep up. So what happened was this really forced me to go back and say like, no, I'm Taylor and this is what I can do. And I'm not afraid to do it. So my invites went back to how I love to invite. And that is by really building the relationship first. Um, my husband calls me a soft sell. And like, I know people on the team know that I will literally talk to people for three months before they commit to a challenge pack. But I, that means I have to have way more conversations going on than other people for me to be be successful, but um, that's what works for me. But it was able, I was able to pinpoint that fear and label it, put it in a box and say, it's not real, go do your thing. So I became more confident in the way that I tailor invite. And I just was sending them out um, way more than I normally do because I wasn't afraid to just be myself and be the type of coach that I am. So what was the change? What changed you back? Because it sounds like you were going back to the way you were inviting previously. So what made that fear come about and change the way you were doing things from the first way you did it? Being at Success Club 1. Being yeah. like um, behind. Like I felt like I was behind. So I started sending invites that weren't true to how I do things. I'm very blue. I have to have that like um, – person connection. So I started sending invites like, um, cold inviting doesn't really work. I mean, some people I can send that kind of invite to, but it's not something that works for me. It works amazing for other coaches because they're pretty much attracting those people into their business anyway, that, you know, maybe like a red coach, like they just want the information. They don't need the fluff. Like I would annoy the crap out of them asking them all the questions that I ask. So I think I just kind of saw different ways people were doing things and I couldn't, I thought I was doing it wrong, but I wasn't. Gotcha. Which is just a fear and like an insecurity in itself. So do you guys have any other questions for Taylor? Um, Sarah, I posted three different types of invites. Um, in it's not in a document form but I did a post at the end of February I can go back and find it and create it into a document but there's three different types of invites that I send out there's um the like oh my god hello I it's so good to see you on here and then connecting about everything under the sun and then your occupation um there's what actually Allison on the call dubbed on our team as the kill messages where you just go straight in for what your message is so you just said like a, Hey girl, good to see you on here. Hope this, um, it, this is okay to ask that I have a new challenge group coming up. Would you be interested in hearing more? And then there's one other kind. There's a kill message. So like building relationship message and there's like one other kind I can pull it up though, but yeah, they are in the KB somewhere, but I can make it into a document. I like how you have them labeled too, like the building relationship, the kill the, and whatever the other one was too. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of go on someone's wall and figure out what they're going to need from you. I think I figured out, like, if it's someone that I don't know very well, I'm not going to creep them out and, like, start talking to them about, like, how much I love their hair and stuff. I would, I would much rather just invite them to what I'm inviting them to because then you can kind of get to know them after that. So you can kind of gauge those, gauge those conversations by just, like, taking some time to look at someone's wall. And I forgot to, Taylor, I forgot to announce, what time are you doing your power hour? Oh, I'm going to do a live power hour at 8.30 on Wednesday night. Um, so I will post the link in the KB, and I'll probably just run it through the KB because all my coaches are in there too. Okay. Um, and I'll post, like, pre-recs for you to have done before you go into the power hour. So what I sit down and do earlier in the day, so whenever I sit down and do my power hour, it's as efficient as possible. Okay. And then I always like to end the call with um, a real quick, what are three truths and one lie that you have been told about coaching? Okay. Three truths and one lie. Or you have found about coaching. Okay. Three truths are one, you have to invite. People are not going to come crawling to you whenever you put up a post. Um, you have to send out personal invites. 
if for no other reason besides the fact that then your awesome posts are going to show up on their newsfeed more. You have to invite. Um, number two, truth is that success club is a non-negotiable. Um, I've never missed success club, and I, I think that would be why the word success is in the title of success club. Um, it's a consistent way for you to gauge the growth of your own business. So um, hitting success club is a non-negotiable for me, and that was a truth I was told from the get-go. And number three is that um, third truth. I'm sure there's something that you told me that I ignored and then figured out that it was like the truth later. <laughs> Um, I will say, I'll just touch on the, t on the leadership ladder that Katie touched on earlier. So right now I actually like fell out of team leader in the past couple months and for volume reasons. And I will say this, Katie said to me over the summer, you need to hit 400 PV every single week in your own business. And you need to get to team leader and figure out how to do that. So I sat down and figured out that I needed to get my week leg to 5,000. That's the only thing I was missing. When I started building that week leg to 5,000 PV, my income tripled. So the leadership ladder is no joke. You have, you have to focus on that. I would say before rank. Um, if, you're, if income is a priority for you, which I'm assuming it is because you're all sitting here on this call. So yes, we love to help people and we have helping hearts. But at the same time, um, someone's got to pay the bills. Focus on the leadership ladder. And then I would say the lie that I have the one lie about coaching is that um, anyone can do it. I think people post all the time that anyone can be a coach and I really don't think that anyone can. I think anyone can start out to be a coach and anyone can sign up as a coach, but I think there's a certain type of person that um, can really push through the grit and keep going whenever it's not glamorous, which I would say 75% of the time it's not glamorous. You know, we're by ourselves um, doing God only knows what, but, um, the people that can push through that and see the bigger picture that it's not just about some DVDs and some shakes, but really about the lives that you're changing would be the lie. That's really cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think Sarah had a question. Um, how do you share a coaching story to recruit new coaches when you are just starting out? Um, like your own personal story when you're just starting out? Like how do you get people to join as coaches? Um, is that what you mean, Rachel? Or Sarah, who said that? Sarah, is that what you mean? Yes, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Okay, so Katie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when I first started and I was looking for coaches, I literally said, um, I just started this and – this is why I started coaching. I initially just wanted the discount, but I've actually, you know, been, and I share this through private message. I don't post this kind of stuff on my wall. Um, mm -hmm. I've been able to like fill up my gas tank this month or pay my grocery bills, or I'm just trying to pay my grocery bills. Maybe you're not even there yet. Would you be interested in learning more about this? Like okay. very short and simple. And then just ask a question. Okay. It at least gets their wheels turning. Right. Katie, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's that's very true. Like, you just have to share the things, the experiences that you've had. Sarah, you actually had a really good post the other day. I think you turned it into a into a blog post just about, like, even the team environment. Remember, there are three things that we really focus on. The physical transformations, we can, mm -hmm. uh, the financial transformations, and then the emotional transformations. There's three distinct type of transformations. So you can even talk about, Sarah, just the emotional type that you, you know, you have experienced so far. You can talk about, you know, what you are looking forward to. You can talk about the stories of other coaches and other successes. But I think right now in starting off, you want to just think of, you know, what are the smaller things that I want to be able to do now? You know, groceries or filling up the gas tank or, you know, just paying for your family's vacation, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, I am going to end this call. Um, the document, though, is in the KB, and I'm sure that Taylor will put together the scripts. 
And if you uh, want to join her on Wednesday night for an invite power hour, that's at 830, I think you said? Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you.